So the first video went up about restoring the Boxford and the Walco. Now I'm going to be sort of focusing on the Boxford because that's the machine that's not working at the moment. The Walco does. So we put the first video, or I put the first video up yesterday just saying what I was doing. This is going to be the first day of actually getting some stuff done. Now you'll have seen that I took the um, the saddle off, the top slide, the cross slide, the apron. Um, that's all come off. You'll, you'll have saw it like, all laid out on the bench. So the first thing we're going to do is start stripping some of that old uh, crusty paint uh, off the top slide, the cross slide, uh, some of the little bits and pieces. The apron's going to be a the saddle's going to be a little bit more difficult um, because the method that I was using. First, I tried the wire brush on the angle grinder. wasn't really doing much, so I went to I use a fine. Uh, a very fine abrasive satin wheel on the grinder. Now what you'll see when I'm doing this is the grinder is set up very close to where the sandblaster is in the garage and that is just where it normally sits. I don't normally do parts, uh, grind or, or buff parts that are as big as these um, so that's why it was so close. I don't normally do parts this big. I normally do in small. I make my own small stainless steel parts and, and other bits and pieces. So for small parts going in and out of the sandblaster and the, the grinder and the polisher, it just makes sense. So if it's a problem, I'll move it out of the way. But if not, let's get started on some time lapse. But before we do that, time to brew up. So this was actually quite a lengthy process. Um, what I am doing is I'm using the satin wheel on the grinder just to take the paint and the, uh, the corrosion off. I'm not attacking any sort of areas that are crucial, no machine surfaces, anything like that. It's basically just anywhere on the machine there's corrosion um, in non-essential areas and areas that are painted that really need to be uh, properly restored. There are going to be certain areas as well that you'll probably see where it's really difficult to get in with this wheel just because of how wide it is. So what I'll end up doing is once these parts are done, um, I'll probably go in with the Dremel just with a, a buffing pad on just to try and get the paint out of those crevices where it's a little bit difficult to get them out from. Um, it wasn't the easiest thing to do. You'll see I'll have, I've put a um, just the, the end of the Henry Hoover there just to catch any dust because the this, this paint was just turning to like a really fine dust that was just going everywhere. I've never known anything like it, probably because the paint's so old. Um, and you can see sort of in the areas under the paint, the, the sort of the finish on the, the metal areas um, is very rough, like they've been ground. Um, they're not an essential area, so they don't really matter. Of course, the machine surfaces and the areas that do count, we're going to obviously treat those areas a little bit differently. Um, and try and get them as precise as possible. The uh, saddle of the lathe is actually going to be a bit too big for me to use the, the grinder on just because it's so big it's just going to get in the way so I think with the, the satin wheel I'll have to come up with a different process. I'll probably paint strip it first then maybe go in with a Dremel afterwards just to buff any areas, any paint that hasn't, that hasn't come off. Um, but for the small parts, the top slide, the cross slide, this little sec this little piece here is for the saddle which uh, clamps it to the bed. Um, and uh, this piece here, this piece is, I don't think it's painted but there was quite a bit of corrosion on the edges, the non-essential areas, so again just pulling that corrosion off. Um, whether it gets painted or not I wouldn't have thought so because on the, to the, the side of this part these you've got the marking um, for the angle sections on the cross slide. This piece here is actually the part that sits on top of the headstock, um, covers where all the belts and the back gear goes. This was cut, this plate was pulled off just to have a look back there, see what the condition of the belt was. Uh, but while it was off and while I had the grinder going, um, I basically hit it with the, the satin wheel again just because it was fairly heavily rusted uh, and the paint's going to end up coming off anyway. Whatever, I mean a few people have said you know, paint it in the, the standard colour that it was in at the moment. It's a very difficult colour to find, it's like a bluish grey, so any recommendations of what colour we should paint this? I'm not really bothered about painting it non-standard colours. 
Um, so I was thinking either like a dark grey or maybe a, a silver, metallic silver. Here you can see I'm just trying to figure out how to get the, uh, the chuck off. So what I'm going to do is just put a pry bar in the chuck uh, jaws. It doesn't actually take much uh, pressure as what you see here, but because the lathe isn't fixed down at the moment to the floor, obviously it's going to move when putting uh, leverage on the chuck itself. I'm probably most likely going to be switching this chuck out at some point anyway for a 125, something slightly wider, just so I can get a few uh, bigger work pieces in the lathe when I'm using it. You can see here, that's where the guard for the chuck goes on, which is off to one side at the moment. And I'm just kind of having a look, seeing where the fixings are. I've never taken apart one of these lathes before, I just want to be careful when I pull it apart. Uh, I don't want anything breaking or anything like that, but I do want to pull the whole thing apart just so it can have a proper good clean uh, and some nice fresh paint when we repaint it. You've got the motor um, and belt section here. I was just having a quick look at the uh, state of the belts. The belts are probably going to be replaced anyway just for peace of mind. Uh, and this is obviously what puts tension on the belts there. What I'm most interested in is the wires coming out of the motor. Uh, the inverter that we're going to be using takes single phase from the wall socket and then puts it into three phase. The inverter will be plugged directly into the motor housing, straight to the motor. Um, so we don't actually have any need for the rest of the electronics that are on this thing. There's wires that go absolutely everywhere that you'll see in just a moment. Um, so with the route that we're taking for the rewire on this lathe, most of this stuff is, is not needed at all, so it will just be pulled out and just be made to look as, as clean as possible. So I'm just pulling the cover off here. This uh, stop start section here is actually broken. Um, it's probably why the, the guys that had we had this lathe from uh, it was a shop in Birmingham, why well, they'd just perhaps given it a quick go and just decided, you know what, this is too far. The top flathead I had a right ball out getting off um, because it was such a shallow section of the, the flathead, um, which you'll see how much trouble I had. Then what I had to do was pull all the wires out of, I don't know the name of these components here, but um, you can see the amount of wires coming off. The system that we're going to with the inverter is going to be so much simpler, it's going to get rid of all of this unknown wiring and just be a direct controller straight to the motor and we can control everything else from the inverter itself. Where the inverter will be mounted, uh, I don't know whether it's going to be replacing this box here or whether it's going to be mounted on the wall behind the lathe like my friend Elliot has his. So this isn't going to be the most exciting episode but it's important work that needs to be done. I'm um, just getting all this stuff out. There's going to be there's a fair few metal tubes that go through the bottom of the uh, the lathe stand, which are going to just need to be traced and going through and pulling all the old wiring out. The only things we need we need three the three power uh, red wires that come off the motor and an earth uh, to control it with the inverter. So you'll see here I'm just trying to pull everything out, and then once we pull it all apart, we won't have to do this. We'll just be able to unthread and pull the wires through the tubes and just dispose of them. So with it actually being quite a long video, this time lapse is making it. I'm probably going to just pull the uh, show you the rest of the wires being pulled out, and then leave the next for the next part. Um, so we're going to need a few bits of this lathe. We're going to need obviously the inverter to control it. We're going to need a tool post stud. We're going to need a tool post of some description, whether it be a standard one or I'd like a quick change tool post, but they are quite pricey. Um, as well as pulling everything out. Uh, and obviously the paint and restoration of the outside. Um, it'd be interesting to see what you guys, what colour you guys think I should paint it. 
Uh, but we'll see you in the next part. Thanks for watching.